All right, get your King James Bible, turn to Jeremiah 19. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All right, let's go to Jeremiah 19 and verse 1. Thus saith the Lord, go and get a potter's earthen vessel, a bottle, I'm sorry, a potter's earthen vessel bottle you know basically a clay pot and take of the ancients of the people and of the ancients of the priests you know take the old take the older people that uh hopefully have some knowledge and wisdom right and hopefully if you're older you're respected verse two and go forth into the valley of the son of Hinnom, which is by the entry of the east gate, and proclaim there the words that I shall tell thee. Uh, now this is the place where they used to burn their children alive to Moloch. Yeah, human sacrifice to basically Satan. The valley of the son of Hinnom. Verse 3. And say, Hear ye the word of the Lord, O kings of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Behold, I will bring evil upon this place, the which whosoever heareth, his ears shall tingle. Oof, that don't sound good. Because they have forsaken me and have estranged this place and have burned, sense, burned incense in it unto other gods whom neither they nor their fathers have known nor the kings of Judah and have filled this place with the blood of innocence. Well, yeah, if you're burning your children alive... I would say that's probably the blood of innocence, you know. Verse 5. They have built also the high places of Baal. Baal is Satanism. To burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings unto Baal, which I commanded not, nor spake it, neither came it into my mind. I didn't tell them to do this. You know, they they did this on their own. Maybe the devil told them to do it, but uh, the Lord didn't tell them. They burned their sons with fire. Isn't it strange or a coincidence that... Uh, they did that down in uh, Latin America. Matter of fact, uh, if I remember correctly, the Aztecs did that down in uh, what their capital, which uh, sits on the spot that is currently Mexico City. That is if you could believe what the Spaniards wrote. They did uh, human sacrifice. There's a lot of cultures that did human sacrifice. A lot of them. So I'm sure they all had the same spiritual father. Verse 6. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that this place shall no more be called Topheth, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but... The Valley of Slaughter. Uh, I got to find out. I think this is... Uh, I think this is ha Armageddon. The Valley of Armageddon. I think so. All right. I just looked into it. And uh, this Valley of Hinnom, or Topheth, is where they get the word Gehenna which is a uh, 
reference to hell burning. And uh, some Bible scholars absolutely do believe this is going to be the, the uh, place of Armageddon, which would, uh, which would make it the valley of slaughter. Verse 6. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that this place shall no more be called Topheth, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. So, yeah, I do believe it's probably Armageddon will be there. The valley of slaughter. Why not? That's where God's going to slaughter his enemies. Verse 7. And I will make void the council of Judah and Jerusalem in this place, and I will cause them to fall by the sword before their enemies and by the hands of them that seek their lives. And their carcasses, carcasses will I give to be meat for the fowls of the heaven and for the beasts of the earth. And I will make this city desolate and in hissing. Everyone that passeth thereby shall be astonished and hiss because of all the plagues thereof. And I will cause them to eat the flesh of their sons and the flesh of their daughters. And they shall eat everyone the flesh of his friend in the siege and straightness, wherewith their enemies and they that seek their lives shall straighted them. This absolutely came to pass in the famine. Uh, the Babylonians surrounded the city. There was no food going into the city. And there was an account where a woman complained to the king. She says, well, my neighbor hid her son. You know, we, we cooked my son and ate him one day. And then when it came time for her to cook her son and feed us, well, she wouldn't do it. Uh, I forget exactly where that is. But... Uh, Absolutely came to pass. Now, there's another thing, too. Uh, they are actually using a thing called natural flavors. Somebody sent it to me, and I looked into it detailed, I, but I don't remember what it's called. But they are using... Uh, fetal tissue for flavorings for food. I forget what they call it, but it's in a lot of different items, especially items like, uh, I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe it's like in things like Pepsi Cola and some other food items. You know, the big, the big money people, I'm not sure if it's Nabisco or whoever, but it's, I looked into it. It's true. Absolutely true. So guess what? America's eating the flesh of the children. I wish it wasn't true, but it is. And this is not something, well, this is not something that I just read off the internet. Usually something like this, they give you a name of ingredients, and then you got to look up what the name of the ingredient is, and then you got to look up that, and then you got to look up that, and then you find out it's from, uh, yeah, sickening. Uh, there was a woman who was a nurse. She worked at an abortion clinic, and... They were supposed to do a partial birth abortion, but the baby was born before the doctor could terminate the child's life. Well, she took the doctor, took the baby, and put it in a pan of water and let it drown. And she was horrified. She just couldn't. She became a believer shortly thereafter. And she started looking into who owned the abortion clinics. Well, take a guess who owned all the abortion clinics. The you know who's did and uh, uh, she was in a medium-sized city you know I don't know exactly how large something the size of let's say uh, st. Louis or 
Denver or something, you know, something along those lines. Not a not a huge city, but not a small one either. And uh, she wrote a tract about all this. And uh, she mentioned that every day at the closing, when they were finished at the end of the day, the abortion clinic, that uh, FedEx would come and pick up packages. Yeah. Well, guess what they were doing with them? Well, some of them went for medical. Some of them went for uh, food stuff. And um, I every day. And, um, you know, FedEx and UPS and all them, you know, they make deliveries in the morning. And then they do pickups in the afternoon. I mean, that's how it works. You know, they fill up your truck at night then in the morning you go out and you deliver and then your truck's empty and then after lunch you start doing all your pickups and take them back to the warehouse where they sort them and ship them out well when i read this i mean i read this a long time ago uh probably close to 30 years ago but I didn't know about the food thing until just uh, recently, you know, within a year or so, maybe two years. I, I think about a year, maybe a year ago, year and a half, something like that. So it's pretty vile. Pretty vile. And this is what we're dealing with. All right, verse 9. Jeremiah 19.9 And I will cause them to eat the flesh of their sons and the flesh of their daughters, and they shall eat every one the flesh of his friend in the siege and straight, straightness, wherewith their enemies and they that seek their lives shall straight at them. Then shalt thou break the bottle in the sight of the men that go with thee. Now remember, he grabbed a uh, a piece of pottery, a vessel, a you know, a bottle, and then he throws it down and breaks it. Then shalt thou break the bottle in the sight of the men that go with thee, and shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts: Even so will I break this people and this city as one breaketh a potter's vessel that cannot be made whole again, and they shall bury them in Topheth till there be no place to bury. In other words, that place is going to be so full, there's not going to be a spot to bury anybody anymore. Thus will I do unto this place, saith the Lord, and to the inhabitants thereof, and even make this city as Topheth. And the houses of Jerusalem and the houses of the kings of Judah shall be defiled as the place of Topheth because of all the houses upon whose roofs, roofs they have burned incense unto all the host of heaven, you know, the fallen angels, and have poured out drink offerings unto other gods. Then came Jeremiah from Topheth, whither the Lord had sent him to prophesy, and he stood in the court of the Lord's house and said to all the people, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring upon the city and upon all her towns all the evil that I have pronounced against it, because they have hardened their necks, that they might not hear my words. Oh boy. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.